Okay, no, this is a, kind, of, kind of a week late, and probably everyone's already seen this film. So, Star Wars The Force Awakens. <clears throat> Abrams, being a huge fan of the classic trilogy, did this the right way from a classic trilogy fan standpoint. And that he took the feeling and the flow of, of, of a classic trilogy sort of film and added more special effects and some more action sequences to it. <clears throat> the plot feels like he took bits and pieces from all three classic trilogy films and combined them into one. <clears throat> definitely, definitely worth seeing. Saw it in 2D because a 3D would have been just that an awkward time for us to go see. I really do wish we would have seen this in IMAX 3D because this was fantastic. Dialogue worked well. Seeing the old guard talking with the new guard, it, it, it worked well. He knew all the right nostalgia strings to pull, where to throw in the proper lines of dialogue. It had a, a nice amount of, <clears throat> of speed to it. This is a quick two and a half hours. But it also goes to show that if you take someone who is a fan of the source material, is good at their job, you give them the money, and then you walk away. You get a film that is good. Avengers. Whedon liked the source material. They gave him money. They got out of the way. It worked. Avengers 2, they got in his way. It didn't work. The original Spider-Man trilogy, 1 and 2, they gave him money. They got out of the way. 3, they got in his way. It didn't work. So you very much can tell when you give people who have a love for the source I mean, not just, yeah, I like source. You can tell he loves it. This is less of a true feature-length film than it is a love letter and awesome nostalgia trip. That's all I'm going to say for the spoiler-free portion. Great film. If you haven't seen it already, you were probably sick. Or you have a, a, a two-year-old that takes up a lot of time. <clears throat> so let me get into the meat of it. What I really liked is as you're watching, you see the archetypes from previous films. It's like, ooh, it's a girl, Luke. No, so it's a Leia. This is girl Luke on a desert planet who's kind of a scavenger, who gets a random droid, who's got the information that's needed for people on another planet. It's, it's a new hope. It's a new hope right there. It's like, oh, new R2 is a ball with so much personality from something like his beeps, boops, and the ability to, to rotate his head across the sphere. <clears throat> And I was like, man, thank you, Wally, for showing everybody that a robot can have a tremendous amount of personality. R2, of course, makes a, an appearance. But R2 has been partially shut down since, since Luke left. And of course, you find out why Luke left. And it's it's a satisfying piece. When, when girl Luke shows up, all of a sudden R2 gets to perk up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Kylo Ren was trained by Luke, but got seduced by the dark side. He's the reason Luke went into hiding. Kylo is not his name. He's the leader of the Knights of Ren. His parents that you know. Yeah. And they kind of come right out and say it very early on. His dad is Han Solo. His mom is Leia. Darth Vader is his grandfather. That's impressive. And you can tell girl Luke, from musical cues, is probably Luke's daughter. Which was awesome. Probably. I haven't looked much into it. And I, I don't think they're going to go twins again. Because that would be kind of weird. <clears throat> but I think having the twins have their own... Uh, uh, familiar, their own lineage, and then having the face would be pretty good. Kylo Ren, I liked how they positioned him. He wasn't all powerful. But during the ending fights, because he was shot before, that's why he's not very good. And he's not in control of his emotions. He's wild. <clears throat> he's angry. He's not cold and calculated like Darth Vader was. He very much reminded me of Anakin in Episode 3. Just with less less really solid training. The cross hilt lightsaber kind of worked. I do like that when he got in close he did try to stab people 
with that little piece, so you got someone in the shoulder, which is good. Good. But you did the right amount of lightsaber fighting. You know, he pretty much fired the lightsaber a lot to get a point across and to destroy things because he's the random angry kid. And the ending fight sequence was good because you had a person who was who had been shot, so he's bleeding, so he's not on top of his game. He's un not controlling his anger, taking on a guy who's just who hasn't been shot, then taking on someone else who is ridiculously powerful in the force. Worked out well. <clears throat> they had another super, super Death Star, which was destroyed after they took out a shield generator, which then allowed them to destroy essentially the thing housing the, the energy that it was taking. It absorbs the sun and fires to destroy multiple planets. Wicked. Wicked. Of course they destroy this awesome weapon. Which, when they show the comparison, it's like, it's like, Death Star. Oh, this thing. Death Star. This thing. And the first time they fire it off, it destroys a pretty much it's like a galaxy in one shot. Because as it's flying, it actually spreads out like a scatter shot. It hits multiple planets. And I was like, I like it. That's good. <clears throat> so, we began on the planet in Jakku. Where a guy who I will call New Han Solo, Poe, is talking with the guy who was the the Ben Kenobi of the storyline. The First Order shows up. Essentially, it's a... They've taken a lot of the old Empire equipment and have done slight modifications, which one should have done. You've already got all the equipment you can need. Just tweak it. Which is a smart thing by Abrams. You just tweak it. On Jakku, there's a lot, a lot of destroyed equipment. So it has, so everything has that older feel to it, which is nice. It's like, oh look, there's down star destroyers, there's down TIE fighters everywhere. It worked. It made sense. <clears throat> so now you get to meet the the black stormtrooper, who at first has no name. And on his first day on the job, he realizes he probably can't just gun down people indiscriminately. So we're going to capture Poe, New Han, and the, he's just like, I can't, I can't deal with this, no, I, I can't just kill people. Helps Poe escape. So now they're trying to find the droid. The droid is with Rey. That's a girl Luke. So now, girl Luke on Jakku ends up finding, who now gets, he gets christened Finn, because his name is FN, and then like a new era code. I have a feeling the numericos probably have a tremendous amount of value, and they probably have little bits and Easter eggs here and there. But I, I was going to watch the film, not to try to really study it. That's what cinema says is, is, is there for. <clears throat> so they end up finding him, and this is one of your first real comedic moments. Like, you're listening to He's like, yeah. And the resistance, yeah. Yeah. They, they look like me. Some, 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 some are different. But the fact everyone felt organic. The new people worked on well. They were smart. They were like, "Here's a new. We're gonna take some new actors. How many? Three. 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 Here are gonna be my three principal young actors. Everyone else is gonna be a guy who I can say, "Here's your character. Just go out on the stage and do it. Do it, Matt Parkman." You know, he picked people who you're like, "Why well, he's got a lot of." established actors in this. And people who can do bit roles, but do them well, and probably also coach some of the, the younger people into it as well. <clears throat> so of course, to, to escape, they hop on the Millennium Falcon. Which they don't know how to fly. But it gets picked up by essentially a garbage barge. Which is being used by Han Solo and Chewie. Here we go. And they're like, oh man, we're going to go someplace. But we need to go here before we can go to the Resistance. They go to a new place. Essentially, by the water, uh, most obviously. Ray has his feeling. Goes out there and finds Luke old lightsaber. Now, ironically, the old lightsaber, or the lightsaber that uh, Kylo Ren is using, is actually an appropriate Darth Vader lightsaber. They don't really show it well enough, but they showed some still shots, and you can tell it's 
Darth Vader saber with the, the cross open to it. <clears throat> she touches the lightsaber. She knows something's going on. And it's more or less told. The person you're waiting for is not going to come find you. You have to go find them. And I was like, oh, Luke's got a daddy. Ooh, that's why she has a lightsaber. And it was like, this belongs to, you know, Vader. This belongs to Luke. This belongs to you. It's like, hmm. Is that an Abrams red herring or a direct? Eh? Eh? And he had this. Luke had this. Th th this is for you. I'm winking. Did you see the wink? Also, great a practical effect. I like seeing people walking. Because when people are marching, even though they're indoctrinated to march in the exact same beat, there's always a little bit of variation. Which, when you do CGI, everything's stop step. We are going the most the most regimented styles of, of individuals walking in formation, there's always a slight variation. It's not like you can just draw a line and they all follow the line. There's always that slight amount of either it's just, you know, your natural gait when you walk, there's a little bit of, and it works, worked great. Practical sets, practical effects, as best you could, minimal CGI. Perfect, that's classic trilogy to a T. <clears throat> so of course, Kylo finds out, oh hey, the girl, she's seen the map. I need the map to find Luke Skywalker. Tries to take the map from her using Jedi, well, like Sith mind tricks. Doesn't work. She's too strong. She's Jedi mind tricks to escape. Of course, where do they keep her at? They pretty much keep her right where everyone else has to go once the shield generator's been knocked out to then destroy it to destroy the major planet. Again, the evil people are kind of idiots. You, you would almost think if you've got one specific location that can destroy your entire plant, you would probably keep that area super heavily fortified. Like, I, I would probably have guards, large guns, domesticated local creatures, whatever I could. I know the Empire will use droids, or the First World will use droids. It's bases of the old emperor, empire. It's like, man, they talk about using clones again. Which is good, little shots here and there. See, I, I probably would have had guns and everything. I would have had super, super high-tech security. I would have multiple layers of security, so you can never just get in, do what you need to do, and get out. There is a major death in this film. Han Solo confronts his son. His son discusses what he has to do for his next step. And kills him. So it's all the right notes, and we end with Ray holding Luke's old lightsaber, looking at Luke. And you can tell Mark Hamill's had a rough life. Looks like his nose has been broken quite a few times. And Luke has no dialogue. He says it all through just facial features, emotion, and I think that by that time the crowd is so involved in it, he didn't have to say a single word. So... Excellent job. Great job. If you haven't seen it, see it. If you've already seen it, probably see it again.